It's a true story by a Buddhist monk, Ajahn Brahm, who had a place in Australia. So he says, it's a true story. We had just moved into our new city temple, a little to the north of Perth. We were having a grand opening ceremony and to our surprise and delight, the then governor of Western Australia, Sir Gordon Reed, and his wife had accepted our invitation to attend. I was given the job of organizing the marquee for the courtyard and the chairs for the visitors and VIP. I was told by our treasurer to get the very best. We wanted to put on a very good show. After a little researching, I found a very expensive rental company. It was located in one of the rich western suburbs of Perth and hired out marquees for the garden parties of the millionaires. I explained what I wanted and why it had to be the best. The woman with whom I dealt, she understood, so the order was placed. Then all the furniture and chairs arrived late on Friday afternoon. I was around the back of our new temple helping someone. When I came back to check the delivery, the truck and the men had already gone. I couldn't believe the state of the marquee. I it was covered with red dust. I was disappointed, but the problem could be fixed. We began to hose the marquee down, and then I checked the visitor's chair, and they were just as filthy. Rags were brought out, and my priceless volunteers began to clean each chair. Lastly, I looked at the special chairs for the VIPs. They were special. Not one had legs the same length. They all wobbled a lot. This was unbelievable. This was too much. I rushed to the phone, called the hire company and caught the woman just as she was about to leave for the weekend. I explained the situation, emphasizing that we couldn't have the governor of Western Australia rocking on a wobbly chair during the ceremony. What if he falls? She understood, apologized and assured me that she would have the chairs changed within the hour. This time, I waited for the delivery truck. I saw it turning into our road, halfway up the road, some 60 meters from the temple. With the truck still traveling quite fast, one of the men jumped out and came running towards me with wild eyes and clenched fists. Where's the bloke in charge? He yelled. I want to see the bloke in charge. I was to find out later that our first delivery was their last for the week. After us, the man, men had tidied up and retired to the bar to begin the weekend. They must have been well into their weekend drinking when the manager came into the bar and ordered them all back to work. The Buddhists needed their chairs changed. I went up to the man and said gently, I am the bloke in charge, how can I help? He moved his face closer to mine with his right fist still clenched, almost touching my nose. His eyes were burning with anger. I smelled the strong odor of beer from his mouth only a few inches away. I felt neither fear nor arrogance, I just relaxed. My so-called friends, stopped cleaning the chairs to watch. Not one of them came to help me. Thanks a lot, friends. The face-off lasted a couple of minutes. I was fascinated by what was happening. The angry worker was frozen by my response. His conditioning was only to seeing fear or counter-aggression. His brain did not know how to respond to someone relaxed when one of his fists was next to their nostrils. I knew he could not punch me nor move away. My fearlessness bewildered him. In those few moments, the trucks had parked and the boss came towards us. He put his hand on the frozen worker's shoulder and said, come on, let's unload the chair. That broke the impasse, giving him a way out. I said, yes, I'll give you a hand, and we unloaded the chairs together. Quite a story, na? 
So this man who wanted to beat him up was that tuning fork vibrating with anger. Ajahn Brahm could have vibrated with anger and it gets nowhere. See, understand one thing, anger, however right, it's always wrong. It's wrong for you. It's wrong for the mother. It doesn't matter logically. It may, you may be right. Your stance may be right. And we are not saying don't do something about it. But to do something about it out of anger, that's what's always wrong for you. So anger, however right, it's wrong for you. So if you really understand that and you keep your peace and you be that tuning fork which remains still when this is vibrating, then after a while that worker became still like Ajahn Brahm. That's the power of peace. Sri Aurobindo says, no, your inner silence has a, is a force. It changes the environment. Do you want to constantly be a plaything of the environment or you, do you want to be a master to change the environment? And it's not so difficult. You just have to invite mother into the equation, hold on to your aspiration and see the beautiful world she is opening you to. And you can be so excited about that world that all these little, little things seem inconsequential. I'm not interested in tangoing with them. I have much bigger things to work for, reach out for, look up to.